our next speaker is Professor Tony Capon. Tony is director of the Monash Sustainable Development Institute and holds a chair in planetary health in the School of Public Health and Preventive Medicine at Monash University. Tony has more than two decades of senior leadership and management experience in public health policy, research and education. Looking forward to your talk, Tony. Thank you. Thanks uh, very much, Yvonne. And uh, I'm coming to you today from Wurundjeri country uh, uh, here in Melbourne. And it was terrific uh, to be welcomed today by uh, Uncle Chris Tobin and Nairi. What a marvellous uh, presentation you gave just now. So I've been asked to speak about preparing health services for climate change in Australia. And I think uh, I'd just like to wrap some of the, uh, the other work that people have spoken to up in a bit of a package before we uh, uh, come to the Q&A. But I want to start with the Australian Government's Department of Health corporate plan uh, for the current period, 2021-2022, uh, because I had a look at that today as I was thinking about what I might say. And uh, it is great uh, to see the vision uh, that's articulated in this plan. I expect you're all pretty familiar with it. Um, uh, better health and well-being for all Australians now and for future generations. That's great. Uh, our purpose with our partners uh, support the government to lead and shape Australia's health and aged care system and sporting outcomes through evidence-based policy, well-targeted programs and best practice regulation. So far, so good. But do a search on that 88-page uh, document and quite disturbingly, despite those ambitious statements of vision and purpose, the word climate does not appear in the 88-page corporate plan for our Department of Health at the national level in 2021-2022, more than 12 months after uh, those devastating bushfires that others have referred to. So we have a problem in terms of our health governance. Another thing that I'm aware of is the terms of reference for our COAG Health Council, which is the Australian government and all of the states, 2014 COAG Health Council. Uh, you can see here, at the scope of council responsibilities, that first sentence there, the Commonwealth, state and territory governments have a shared intention to work in partnership to improve health outcomes for all Australians and ensure the sustainability of the Australian health system. This was written in 2014, seven years ago, and seven years later, uh, there is not the word climate in the major plan of the Australian government's health system. To me, that is disturbing. Now, in 2015, so around the same time as those terms of reference for our health ministers were drafted, WHO put out this guidance, an operational framework for building climate resilient health systems. We are part of WHO. We're at all those meetings in Geneva. Why this disconnect? In 2018, uh, funded by the New South Wales government, which happens to be the same political colour as the national government, our group at the University of Sydney developed a draft conceptual framework for climate change and health in New South Wales. We had funding from the Ministry of Health and the Department of Planning, Industry and Environment. We based it on WHO's DIPSIA framework, our drivers, pressures, our state of the environment exposures. Uh, others have spoken about this today and at the bottom there, the mitigation policies we need, the adaptation policies, uh, the event response policies that we need to see to protect and promote health. So uh, the frameworks are there, we're just not using them yet. 
uh, from the point of view of the MJA and the Lancet, the Lancet countdown has been mentioned earlier today. We established this uh, back in 2018, co-chaired by Paul Beggs, who's um, uh, with Jeffrey and Leslie at Macquarie University, Ying Zhang from the University of Sydney. Uh, we established this several years ago. We've done now four cycles of reporting but still nothing in the corporate plan of the Australian government's Department of Health. With the MJA, we're also looking at the role of health professionals. It's relevant to all health professionals, doctors, nurses, everyone working in the health system. And just today, at one o'clock today, this report was released here in Australia, uh, the College of Physicians, uh, Climate Change and Australia's Healthcare System, a review of literature, policy and practice. Uh, this work was led by the institute that I direct at Monash in partnership with the Climate and Health Alliance, uh, Fiona Armstrong and the team, and Catherine Bowen, who's now with Melbourne Climate Futures. So, oh, wrong direction, sorry. So that uh, report that you'll be able to uh, see tonight, I can put the link to the report in the chat box uh, uh, as I finish shortly, uh, four components to that new work. Uh, a re rapid systematic review of how health systems around the world are responding to the threat of climate change, a policy and institutional analysis to help the College of Physicians understand the lie of the land on climate and health across Australia, uh, case studies from a broad array of geographic reasons, regions and economic analysis around the bushfires that we heard about uh, earlier today and what might be ahead in the coming decade. Some good news, though. Um, Jeffrey, where you're based there at Macquarie University, uh, obviously the, the local health district is the Norden Sydney local health district, and they're the first local health district in Australia to have a planetary health framework. Climate change, yes, and biodiversity and ecosystems, as Nairi has said. We need an integrative approach. We don't get to work on climate change between now and 2030 and then start working on biodiversity. We have to be integrative. So two final slides. What should health services do? Uh, they need to prepare for health impacts of climate change. We've heard about these today. So they need to prepare for what will be coming through the door, what the patients will be presenting with. They need to get ready. Secondly, they need to take a population health perspective, advocating transitions to sustainable ways of living that are also good for health, realising the co-benefits that we just heard about. And thirdly, get our own house in order urgently transition to net zero healthcare as the NHS in England is trying to do and we'll hear about after the break. And how should this be done? How should health services in Australia do it? Well, I've identified six points here. Health service leaders should create an authorising environment in which climate change is understood as everybody's business and an authorising environment in which Indigenous ways of knowing, being and doing are valued. That's essential as a foreground to progress. Secondly, we need to build capacity among healthcare professionals, both when we're training them at university, for example, but also once they're in service. It, we can't wait for a whole new cohort of trained health workers. We need to skill up those that are already in the systems. It's urgent, we need continuing professional development, needs to be integrated. Thirdly, integrate climate change and sustainability into existing frameworks for service quality, planning, development and accreditation. Fourth, start measuring and tracking indicators of healthcare sustainability. The, the chief information officers in each health service shouldn't just be looking at money and health outcomes. They should be looking at carbon and other environmental outcomes. Fifthly, sharing best practice from around the country and around the world. The example that I just used from the Northern Sydney Local Health District, let's share those things better. We have global green and healthy hospitals. That's what they're about. And sixth, 
the final one, uh, the need to establish some sort of facility in each jurisdiction to coordinate and lead the organisational development and change that's required. We need to invest to make these changes. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and uh, look forward to the discussion. Thank you so much, Tony. A brilliant presentation and a really great segue to um, our discussion.